Welcome to Stratford Paddock, Wolves 1, Manchester United 0. First loss under Rangnick, but it was more of the same performance-wise, wasn't it, Steve? What did you make of the performance? A lot in that Newcastle game, weren't they? Mm. Um, Newcastle obviously defended a lot deeper. I thought it was a almost flawless tactical performance from Wolves. Mm. They looked at what United do, what United's threats are, figured out you can contain us by not necessarily pressing us, because when someone presses you, you have an opportunity. Although you can press this United team because it's not good. But they chose not to. They chose to sit off and go, go on then, play through us. And none of the back four have got that sort of like real genuine accurate ball in them. We're United not a team that, four, yeah, we don't, we're not a team that can look to fight for second balls because we don't really have that sort of energy and tempo about us. And we definitely don't have the quality nor the movement in the centre of the pitch. So when you've got a team that just completely goes in a really, really compact mid-block right across the halfway line and goes, go now, fuckers, deal with that. Mm. You're not going to put a ball over the top because the pace of Cavani and Ronaldo is not quite the same as, as like a Rashford or something like that. So they know they can contain you. And also someone doesn't have the ability in the back line to be able to put it further enough away from the goalkeeper but close enough behind the back four so it's actually something you can get on the end of. We didn't have that threat. So the other threat that you've got to focus on perhaps is someone in midfield who can maybe turn in possession, someone who can maybe drive at a midfield. And we just can't. We we just abjectly don't have that level of quality in our team. So, but so the thing that I can't get my head around is we've seen this team play better than this or a team with actually actually worse players than this. Like last season's team without Varane, Ronaldo, Sancho played better than this a lot. And yet this season, not this isn't an Ole Rangnick thing, under Ole, terrible. Under Rangnick, terrible. Like It doesn't seem to be improving. It doesn't seem to be going in the right direction. He was asked after the game, Rangnick, about where's the press? Why aren't we seeing the press? He's like, we saw it for a bit against Crystal Palace. That was four games ago. Why aren't we seeing it? Why aren't they improving? And why are they actually worse than they were last season? I almost, I mean, we talked about this last time we was on. Is it information overload? Is it the more they know, the less they understand? Is it something where they've just been bombarded with this much information that it's confused them. I know they've not had as much training time on the pitch as they would like, but everyone's dealing with some issues with COVID. Mm. There's restrictions on your training numbers, there's restrictions on your training um, personnel, there'll be restrictions on how many of you are able to get on the pitch at one time to be able to do some practice. There's obviously a high frequency of games, this week at least for United. There's no excuse though. It has to be provably better. If Ralph's coming in for six months, you haven't got three years to work on a project. You're gone two and a half years before that. Mm. You've got if you're here for six months, you have to do what those six monthly managers come in and do. What Ollie himself actually went mm. in and did and went on an unbeatable run. What Ancelotti's done when he's come in. Like you have to go on these like, yeah, I'm only here for the interim. We're gonna do X, Y, and Z. I think Ralph's a, a hell of a coach and a, a hell of a guy that can set teams up to be successful for the future. But you can't just, I mean, someone said on my stream upstairs, would Roy Keane be good to get in and shout at them? Well, Roy Keane shouting at Fred and McTominay isn't going to mean that they, they wake up tomorrow as you know, prime Perlo and Scholes. It's not going to be the case, is it? No. I mean, you can shout at people and you can demand more um, work rate and motivation from them, but it's not going to make you any better when it mm -hmm. comes to the simple basics of passing and dribbling and shooting. And that's the issue. Do you think then that it's a case of they don't know the system yet or they can't do the system or they are just ignoring him? Because I can't I, imagine they're ignoring him. I can't imagine him. Because he's, he's, sorry, because Randy made the point of today's performance looked like we, he said something like, it looks how they've been playing three, four weeks before I got here, which suggests that not only is it, is, is we not seen Ragnick's system fully yet, we haven't even had that sort of new manager bounce of intensity of effort, everything. Like, you don't think it's because they are ignoring it then? No, I, I don't think they are ignoring him. I don't think it, there's any benefit to them ignoring. Some people will say, well, he's only here for six months. He hasn't got the authority. This isn't a prison chain gang that you're trying to motivate for a little mm. bit or, Joe, intimidate for a little bit. These are professional, well-paid, well-renumerated footballers with, you would assume, a lot of professional pride. When you look to... You know, fortunate enough to, to be able to interview tons of, of the best players that I've ever played the game, almost all of them will tell you something along the lines of, didn't matter what the manager was saying to me. Mm. I had my own internal motivation. Someone like Ruud van Nistelrooy, 
needs Fergie to tell him to go score goals. He breathes goals. That's yeah. what he's all about. He wakes up in the morning dreaming about sticking one in the back of the net. You know, do you think anyone had to motivate? Listen, Roy Keane, I'd like you to be the Roy Keane that everyone knows. No, Roy Keane wakes up with that intrinsic motivation to be who he is, and that's what makes him a great player. Motivation's overrated. Mm. Drive and attitude is is what it comes down to. But you can have all the drive and all the attitude in the world. If you're shit, you're shit. And I think some of these players don't have the quality to be able to produce either. And this is something Ralph's going to have to deal with. If we don't have the personnel to deal with what he wants to have us play like, well, he either has to buy those or he has to adapt. But the, thing I'd, the thing I can't get my head around, though, is that he's played this system with lesser players than we've got. Whichever way you want to look at it, maybe we're not good enough to win the Premier League, but we don't look like we're playing his system and failing. We look like we're not trying yeah. or that, that they're not even doing the things he's being asked. Like, fair enough. Let's say we pressed really high and they played through us a few times and we conceded a few goals. Or, you know, when we've got the ball, we play really quick. But, we get, but it's not even that. We're slow on the ball. The passing's poor over and over and over again. Ten-yard, five-yard passes. We're not pressing. It's not like we're doing it and it's not working. I can't see us doing it. That's the that's the thing I don't I can't get my head around and and maybe it doesn't work with better players or the age of the players. People keep looking at Ronaldo. I don't necessarily buy into that, but he's definitely done it with worse players than we've got now. Even if we're not good enough, there's a lot of managers in this saying. I know it's a Ralph Rangnick thing. First and second contracts, mm. but there's a lot of managers will choose to bring in a couple of their own youngsters from various academies because. Every manager that goes through leaves an imprint on a player. And I don't think 40, you know, that old old dog new tricks sort of mm. thing. I don't necessarily think there's an infinite way of playing and that every player can learn an infinite way. Right. I think a lot of it's going to be down to pure muscle memory, pure learned behavior. And I think if you've got like young players who haven't, because you know a lot of academies don't really go into too much tactics at all. They yeah. literally just go play and express yourself. And it's only once you get to like 18 and then 21 where they're starting to really try and put tactics into you. So you got someone around Mason's age, you can pretty much put your tactical imprint on him as a, as a manager, but you get someone Cristiano Ronaldo's age. He's played like Cristiano Ronaldo. Cavani is either going to play like what you want him to play like today, or he's not. And I'm not sure you can teach him to play another way. For me, I think Cavani actually plays perfect for this system, for what I believe Ralph wants him to achieve. But the rest of the team around him is not there. And I don't necessarily know if you can... You know, how old's Fred now? 26, 27? Mm. Is he improving? Even, yeah. Is he, is he going to improve drastically to become a world-class player before he's 30? I fucking doubt it. So... The, these are why these are the reasons why you always see me defend a manager. The recruitment has to be there. Mm. Now, if the team is undoubtedly amazing, and some people will say this United team is amazing, I'm going to disagree with you, but people are entitled to think that. For me, a team's only ever going to be judged on, or should only ever really be judged on its weaknesses, not its strong points. Because your strong points are great, and they can go and win you a game every now and then. Individual but your weak brilliance. points, your weak points is where a team truly lies. Yeah. And if your weakest point is, is costing you games. And I don't necessarily think anyone was that week that they cost us games, obviously, with a massive clangor today. But you can be costing games by your inability to maybe play a ball that was there that a better player sees. Mm. You put Ruben Neves into that team over McTominay, United look loads different. Mm. You put him and Martino in, and I think we're a threat. Do you think it's as simple as that, then? Maybe a couple of new fullbacks, a couple of new midfielders, and we've got ourselves a team? It's, or... it's only ever down to recruitment. Yeah. Now, the, look, managers are going to put their own 10, 15% up and down onto it. And the right manager at the right club at the right time with the right team, magic can happen. Mm. You know, someone like Brian Clough just happens to have the perfect players at the perfect time goes on ridiculous runs. You know, and the same can be true with the wrong manager. I, I think most managers, if they've got, you know, what would be considered a competent team. We went through the, the midfield partnerships right away across the Premier League. United is like a 12th or 13th mm. in the league. It ain't a top four midfield. It ain't one of the top four midfields in the league. And that's where everything breaks down. The midfield's the most important part in a team. And ours is fucking bottom half of the table. Mm. Um, before we go, how worried are you? Because did you expect to see more of a, more of a sort of bounce than this? And looking forward, are you worried? 
Because, yes, you know, top four still could happen, but that's not other own possibility. Obviously, the league's gone. We haven't even started the FA Cup yet. The Champions League's still there. But it doesn't feel like we have the potential to win anything playing like this. And and no. and has this signalled maybe to you that it's more of a, a bigger project than we thought? Because at the start of the season, I thought we were a couple of pieces away from really challenging. Yeah, I did. I, I thought the way Oli had us playing, I thought it was obvious we needed a number six. You could even go with a six and an eight and mm. see an improvement, particularly if Pogba wasn't going to play or was, was going to get moved on. And you knew that Ronaldo was a one to two year dance at most. Mm. It wasn't going to do six or seven or eight or more years, was it? He was never doing that. He might not even, he probably isn't doing anything like that, half that, before he calls it a day anyway, at most. So you knew that there was things that needed amending. If you go back to the end of last season, the reason we lost the Europa League, in a lot of people's opinion at the time, Contemporary opinions was because Maguire didn't play. Mm -hmm. You tell people Maguire's not playing now and they'll go, oh, we might win a game then. Mm. That's how much the mood has shifted on him. I don't think at the start of the season people was like, well, Maguire's got to go. No. Because you just brought Varane in. Oh, yeah, him and Benucci were, and Chiellini were like the best centre-backs yeah. in the Europe. So I, I think perception on him has changed the last six months. Yeah. I think the perception on Rashford's changed the yeah. last six months. And Bruno. Bruno you know, and rightly so. Bruno less so, but certainly the last month. Sure. Shaw's up and down, yeah. yeah. Wamba Saka, I think, has been exposed a little bit, certainly with the newer system. Delo's come into the team and shown him up. That's the worrying thing for me, is where are all these players that have played week in, week out? Your Maguire, your Wamba Saka. These guys are playing week in, week out. Should be match fit, should mm -hmm. be match sharp, should be in form, should be flying. Phil Jones comes in, and two years of working at KFC, and puts in a shift where most people tonight are going to be saying Phil Jones should start now over mm -hmm. Harry Maguire. I've seen it already. Yeah, you know, I don't necessarily agree. I don't think, I think I've mentioned this before we went on air, I, didn't, I don't think he dropped a lot of clangers. I think he had a, a fine game. I don't think he stood out and I don't think he, yeah. he, he was a, an issue in the team. But how the hell is he coming in after two years out and you can't tell the difference between an £80 million so-called so Manchester United captain? And the same when... Delo comes in, Wan Bissaka. You're this fifty million pound signing. You've had that position on lockdown for a couple of years. This guy's been playing Xbox for months. Mm. He comes in and actually looks better than you. That's the fundamental thing at Manchester United is that no one and the only person coming close to it at the moment is David De Gea. That nobody looks like they are undroppable. No, no. one is playing like they're undroppable. I thought Varane was probably United's best player on the pitch tonight. Mm. I thought he did the least wrong, and I thought the most intelligent in his play. Outside of him, Phil Jones gets an honourable mention for the circumstances that yeah. he's come and played well in. Outside of him, who did anything? No, no one. Ridiculous. And that's the problem. Yeah, it is. Right, thanks for joining us, Steve. Don't feel any better, but glad that uh, we, we've had a chat and got a bit off our chest there. Let us know your thoughts at home. What is the problem at the minute at Manchester United? The performances haven't been good and now the results are sort of reflecting that as well. Get your thoughts in the comments below. We'll see you in a bit.